Joker Folie Adieu, the highly anticipated sequel to Joker, a film that captured the complexities of mental illness, societal alienation, and a descent into madness. But while the first film stood out for its raw, grounded approach, the sequel, despite its ambitions, missed the mark in several key areas. The biggest flaw in Joker Folie Adieu is the disjointed and inconsistent narrative structure. The animated sequence where Joker's shadow impersonates him and abandons him on stage sets a tone that is both surreal and disconnected from the gritty realism of the first film. While this artistic decision may have been intended to signify Arthur's fractured mental state, it creates confusion rather than cohesion. The film bounces between these abstract, exaggerated sequences and the more grounded moments in Arkham, leaving viewers unsure of what is real, what is a metaphor, and where the story is heading. In Joker, Arthur Fleck's transformation into the Joker was a gradual, compelling journey. However, in Folie Adieu, Arthur's character seems to regress rather than evolve. Instead of leaning into his newfound identity as Joker, he spends most of the film struggling to maintain that persona. By the end of the movie, Arthur renounces his Joker persona entirely during the trial. While character development is crucial, this felt like a betrayal of the arc built in the first film, where he finally accepted his darker side. Arthur's renunciation of Joker in court undermines the very foundation of his transformation, leaving us feeling like the film is pulling in two contradictory directions. Harleen Quinzel, or Lee, as she is called here, is a pivotal character in the Joker comics. Yet in Folie Adieu, their relationship feels forced and underdeveloped. The film introduces her as a damaged but manipulative figure who falls in love with Arthur's Joker persona. While this could have been an interesting dynamic, the way it's executed feels contrived. Her fabricated backstory of growing up in Arthur's neighborhood and experiencing trauma is revealed to be a series of lies, reducing her character to a shallow plot device rather than the complex foil she could have been. By the time she reveals her pregnancy was a lie, any emotional investment in her character has been lost, and her relationship with Arthur feels hollow. Harvey Dent, a key figure in Gotham's lore, is reduced to a background character in Folie Adieu. While the car bomb explosion that scars his face and sets up his transformation into Two-Face is a crucial moment, the film doesn't explore his character enough to make it impactful. Dent's role feels more like fan service than a meaningful contribution to the narrative. We are left wanting more from this character, who could have added layers to the film's exploration of Gotham's legal and moral decay. The courtroom scenes, while central to the film, fail to deliver the tension and drama expected from such a pivotal plot point. Arthur's decision to represent himself in court could have been a moment of brilliance, showcasing his unpredictable genius, but instead, it feels undercooked. His speech, where he renounces the Joker, lacks the emotional weight needed to make this decision believable. Additionally, the court's dismissal of his insanity defense felt rushed, as if the film wanted to move on from this storyline rather than fully explore it. The film's ending leaves us with more questions than answers, but not in a satisfying or thought-provoking way. Arthur's final moments, where a young patient stabs him and carves a smile into his own face, feel like a desperate attempt to shock the audience. While Joker concluded with a chaotic yet fitting final act, Folie Adieu seems unsure of how to wrap up Arthur's story. The symbolic significance of the Joker's legacy living on through another individual is intriguing but feels poorly executed. Rather than offering a meaningful or shocking conclusion, it comes off as an out-of-place attempt at horror that doesn't fit the tone of the rest of the movie. Folie Adieu introduces surreal elements, like the shadow sequence and Arthur's bizarre TV performances, but these moments clash with the gritty, grounded style of the first film. While it's not inherently bad to introduce surrealism into a psychological thriller, the tonal shifts here are too jarring and undermine the film's coherence. The balance between Arthur's mental illness, his delusions, and his reality was carefully crafted in the first film. In Folie Adieu, that balance is lost, leading to a film that feels scattered and unsure of its own identity. The first Joker was praised for its themes of social inequality, mental illness, and the consequences of alienation. However, Folie Adieu fails to build on these themes in a meaningful way. Instead of diving deeper into Arthur's psyche or Gotham's crumbling society, 
the film focuses on convoluted plot twists and half-baked character arcs. The theme of duality, particularly with Arthur's split personalities, had potential, especially given the film's title, but it's underutilized and ultimately feels like a missed opportunity to explore something truly profound. Joker Folie Adieu is a film that had the potential to dive deeper into Arthur Fleck's transformation, but instead, it overcomplicates its narrative with unnecessary twists and surreal elements that detract from the core story. The disjointed plot, underwhelming character arcs, and confusing tone shifts make this sequel a far cry from the emotional and psychological depth of its predecessor. By trying to do too much, the film ends up doing too little. What did you think about Joker Folie Adieu? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one.